Uh, welcome back. This is News Gang. It, it sometimes feels like we're in a deja vu and, you know, we're in this space uh, before. There's that movie. Um, Which one? Uh, the one that starred Jim Carrey. And he repeats the same day over and over. I forget the title of it. it. It's not The Truman Show. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes with Kenya, it feels that way, right? Like we've been here before. Mm -hmm. And usually the trigger is after an election process, something happens, people are not happy. Here we are, we're out in the streets, we want to talk about things, we have issues we need to resolve, we have irreducible minimums, we have mm -hmm. nine-point agendas, we have three-point agendas. Um, and yet here we are again um, with a stalemate of sorts, at least one side sees it as a stalemate. Um, asking for talks. And indeed, the reason I guess I have deja vu is because they're trying to take us back and saying, okay, no, 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 wait, hang on a second. We don't want the bipartisan approach. We want a Kofi Annan type of, um, uh, you know, process. But Sam, we, we really have been here before. Yes, we've been here. And it's, I mean, it goes many years um, since, say, multi-party democracy. Yeah. I am not qualified to speak about that because he is here. But <laughs> <laughs> actually, there have been handshakes even before multi-party yes, democracy. Yes, uh, but if you reflect on um, exactly what happened in 2000 and uh, which was it, 2002, mm. just before the election, um, there was and political leaders have been speaking about it that um, R President Daniel Moy. It's been that long yeah. that I said President Daniel Moy. Right. Um, so he was president and uh, decided that he wants to also figure out how 2002 election. Uh, pans out, so he brings on board Ray Laudinga for, with the um, National uh, Development Party, NDP, NDP. right? NDP, yeah. um, so Ray Laudinga is appointed as a uh, minister of energy, and uh, in March 2002, don't ask me who I was that time, uh, there is a merger, <laughs> and that means that uh, there is some expectation. Yeah. Laudinga became the Secretary General of Kanu, and uh, the expectation was in the succession politics of uh, Kanu that time, there would be some consideration for, say, NDP wing or Ray Laudinga to be specific, but that didn't happen. So, uh, where Daniel Moy decides that it's going to be Uhuru Kenyatta, who yeah. had been um, nominated to be a member of parliament and later became a cabinet minister. Uh, but Ray Laudinga decides that this is untenable, so he leaves uh, the party and uh, goes to form LDP. Uh, later joins hands with NAK to form National uh, Rainbow Coalition under President Kibaki. They beat Uhuru Kenyatta, 62% uh, versus 31% of the vote. And then there, thereafter, there's a standoff because they felt that um, NAC leader, Mwai Kibaki, did not keep the word, his yeah. word, uh, the MOU, yeah. uh, that they were going to create an executive uh, prime, prime minister, minister yeah. position and also that they were going to share power almost equally. So there is... Um, document, a constitutional document, a constitution review of 2005 that is presented to the people. Unfortunately, it doesn't reflect the, the pre-election agreements and therefore it was, there was a stalemate. The Leave government, and of course they were fired by President Kibaki. Nimewa achisha mawaziri wangu wote. Kwa nguvu zindilizo wa na sharia. Exactly. So after that, then you realize that um, we lead ourselves into 2007 um, chaos mm -hmm. and many people died. But then Kofi Annan came here with some eminent personalities from Africa um, talking about um, Grasa Michelle and Benjamin Mkapa mm -hmm. and the talks. Um, before the talks happened, yeah. then the talks happened at Serena. And uh, on either side, they had proposed four people. I wonder why this time it's 7-7. Seven, seven. And those people that uh, were in those talks, on the ODM side, there was Musala Mudavadi, yeah. William Ruto, James Orengo, and Sally Kosgei. On the side of um, PNU, there was Martha Karua, there was Moses Otangula, there was Sam Ongeri, and there was Mutula Kilonzo, uh, the Your late. Father. And I was reading somewhere, of course, it, they took mediation talks for a whole 41 days for them to agree. And Kofi Annan was getting frustrated. Mm. At some point in a book that he wrote thereafter, he's quoted as saying that um, he felt that both sides were bringing some childish demands uh, to frustrate his efforts. And he had to make a decision to go to the president and tell him, a thousand people have died. Uh. It is time to make a deal. Wow. Talks about talks. Talks about and, talks. And, and this is where, you know, we've been. And, uh, you know, when we take a look at, uh, you know, all of these instances, and, and that is 2007. And right. then again, we had 
you know, a similar situation leading up to the 2017 election. Uh, and that is uh, then what led us to, again, changing the commission. Um, and we'll talk about the commission in a minute. But, you know, uh, Jamila, it's... Yeah, yeah, handshake. Again, it continued after yes. that. Let's yes. sit down, well, let's talk, let's form a committee, let's see what we can do, change... Yeah, uh, yeah because, because as, as, as Sam was talking, I even remembered that this yeah. agreements, political agreements, started way back during uh, the time of President Jomo Kenyatta yeah. with, with Jaramogi. And then we even came all the way down to Moy and Jaramogi after the 1982 coup. I even remember they even used to inspect government projects together. They used to address rallies together. President Moy forgave Raila Odinga for his involvement in the 1982 coup and even appointed the Minister for Energy as Gituku mm. uh, was telling us and there was that handshake and all that that, that agreement, the Kano NDP merger, mm. NARC coming all the way down to, to what we saw after the 2007 elections with the, with, with the, with the accord uh, led by, by Kofi Annan and the creation of the office of the Prime Minister and two deputy uh, prime ministers that led now to, to what we had said, Kali Mahuluti, we used to call it that mm -hmm. in Swahili. <laughs> And then now we come all the way down to now 2017 and then the handshake in 2018. Something that actually to date no one really saw coming because of the political situation at the time. Remember the time we had yeah. had um, the Supreme Court uh, nullifying the election yeah. of Uhuru Kenyatta in September. And then I remember there was a time the president would not even... Be, be able to go to Kisumu. Yeah, yeah some parts of this country were almost Raila um, refusing to participate in, in, in the that second, second yeah. uh, presidential yeah. election, yeah. Mm -hmm. leading uh, the boycott of, of products and, yes. uh, you know, in the country. So, again, we saw some very strong positions, strong positions. on either side. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. here comes the handshake. Yeah. This gentleman coming out of Harambe yeah. House and, and everything changes. And, and, and now that we are here, we've always had this push and pull after elections, yeah. we have a talk, we have a handshake, we have a cup of tea, we we meet somewhere where no one else knows we are. Because I think there was a time also President Mwai Kibaki had a meeting somewhere in, I cannot remember when, I'm sure Linus will tell us, but it's our history. Ultimately, we have had some form of agreement coming out of it, Yvonne, and we probably will have some form of agreement coming out of whatever arrangement that we have right yeah. now. But do we have to keep going there? Is it that because history has taught us that these things sometimes do work or it always works or there's an outcome? That's why we keep going back to trying to find something similar to what we have had in the past. Yeah, so you see, the trigger has always been an election mm -hmm. and the aftermath or the outcome of it. Um, but I guess for me, one of the moments um, I would have imagined would have been a great turning point in how we resolve our issues would have been the constitution of Kenya 2010 after the bloody 2007 uh, post-election crisis. Um, and yet after that, then we had 2017, then here we are again. So, Linus, it would seem there is something we are not solving. There is something wrong with us if we keep doing the same thing. So how sure are we that this will be a resolution that then says we will not find ourselves here? What is it? What's, what's at the heart of all of this upheaval and turmoil that we've seen over the years? I think in my view and uh, figuratively speaking, uh, we are into this very frustrating habit of carrying water with a sack. And that's what we've done since the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. We do not close a deal. There are two problems here. One is that lack of a definitive national political identity. We still struggle at what we should be. You know, in the 60s, we began with a, a very strongly parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. It was both parliamentary and also devolved, where um, you have a prime minister being the leader of government and coming from the majority party. And then in the regions, you had the regional assemblies, very powerful regions uh, at the time, eight of them. And then um, within the first year of our independence, we got very uncomfortable with the whole arrangement mm. because we want power to be um, uh, centralized. And remember, we went to Lancaster uh, for the negotiation of independent talks. And there was a possibility of the independence debt being delayed because there was a yeah. deep conflict between Kanu and Kadu. Kanu. Yeah on whether we should have the regional 
prime ministerial arrangement or a, a central um, system of, of governance. And I think it was Jaramogi Oginga Odinga who said, let's accept the um, parliamentary system with the strong regions, and then we will fix this after independence. And indeed, Sounds they, familiar. Yes, and indeed they <laughs> fixed it okay. so quickly uh, that by 1964 we were a republic with a, with a president, uh, all powerful, and then we started working on destroying the Senate, caused a lot of defections. We still do that to date, by the way, mm -hmm. where you go and uh, get members of parliament elected from the other side mm -hmm. and uh, get them to, uh, to defect. We have this culture of weakening the opposition. And uh, uh, basically, I think it's a single party mentality where you don't really believe there should be other voices outside that. It started all the way in the 60s. And uh, we came all the way and um, became a central uh, uh, kind of system. By 69, uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga was, was regretting mm. uh, supporting such a, 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 such a, a centralized uh, power, power structure. So to date, we still struggle. Because the constitution of Kenya 2010 now tried to create a balance of these two. Uh, by mixing the central, uh, very uh, heavily uh, presidential system with a devolved uh, uh, level of government and created two levels of governments where one is headed by the president, the rest is the second one is headed by uh, a governor in, in, in the region. And we're still struggling with that. Up to now, you see, you find uh, governors aligning themselves with the president. You know, it depends on. Uh, patronage for you to uh, get development. You still hear the same language. Of devolution. Yeah. So all this, I, I, I lump all that together into this thing that I'm calling a lack of a political, a national political identity. And then the second problem in my view now is lack of institutionalism. Our politics is really centered on individuals. So right through the talks you, you guys have all mentioned uh, so there'll be a key person, yeah. it's Kibaki and Raila Odinga. <laughs> and then uh, Raila Odinga and Moi. Or, or, you know, we are talking of individuals. You remove those individuals and the whole of those processes that we're talking about become insignificant. Mm. Now, that's a big problem. And we need to watch because the two problems uh, have been solved by other nations very, very effectively. Right now in Nigeria and Ghana, which are countries that have had serious conflicts, mm. bloody uh, histories. Um, th there was a time in Ghana that uh, uh, an, an entire cabinet was basically being executed. And um, in Nigeria, so many military coups. But right now, when you look at their uh, elections, they are resolving the system issue. Uh, resolve the system of how do you get a president, what is the shape of your uh, your legislature, executive, etc., etc. Where we fight here, right now in, in Ghana, a two-party system has taken hold. Mm, yeah. And the elections are very, very close. And, in, and, and, and it happens that we've held elections, we hold elections almost at the same time as Ghana. They have had exactly the same number of elections that we've had between 2000 and, uh, and now 2020, 2023. And the opposition and the ruling party have been ch changing uh, places. We've never had that here. What we have instead is people mutating, and yeah. one time they're in opposition, the other yeah. time they're in government, and, and, and all that. As long as we don't confront this and create a system that generates leadership, then we'll always look this way. We look very unstable. Um, you even have uh, foreign um, entities, diplomats coming in to help us resolve uh, things. I think it's a level lower, a level lower and a lot lower than uh, some of our uh, peers, yeah. like Ghana, Nigeria. They're playing at a better level when it comes to systems, forms of government. Here, we're still um, uh, wandering in the wilderness. 
And you know, what's, what's interesting when, when you said that, it was even what you said, Sam, about um, who the representatives were from either side after 2007. Mm -hmm. The names are pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, just that they're on different sides and that depends uh, really. I, I mean, I, I typically say where you stand in this country depends on where you sit. But one of the things that I've noted through all these processes that we've had is that it's the political class that's involved in those talks and they always agree at the end. Well, yes. Yet, we find ourselves mm -hmm. in the same problems again That's and same. again. And so even when you start to hear, uh, you know, the, the murmurs of people saying, we need more people, uh, you know, in those negotiations, we need more people at that table, you would start to understand why. There's always a four-member team, a seven-member team, a 14-member team. It's always the same people. They always agree. Soon after, they disagree. The same people on different sides of the table sit down, agree, and then they will disagree again. So, you know, you, you take a look and ask yourself, there's something not right here. It, you know, the definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And this is where we are. You always have the political class. They will always agree and they will always disagree uh, soon after. And it's a five-year cycle. And one of the things they always agree on is who will be in the electoral management body, but very quickly after that, they disagree on the constitution of that. And here's where we are again, Sam. Mm -hmm. Another IBC uh, selection panel, another IBC selection process in a bipartisan approach. Um, you know, where are we? We seem to be in limbo <laughs> with that now. Right, it's a very interesting thing. Um, uh, the first IBC reconstitution I covered was the one that um, ended up giving us for Fuller Chibukat and the six commissioners. This at a time that uh, the commission had been reduced from nine commissioners of the Isaka San uh, down to seven. Uh, but listening to the leadership, especially from the Azimio side, them saying that uh, elections are political and therefore we need political parties represented. It will be important to walk back a little bit and focus on the origin of the selection panel, especially with the IABC. Of course, the IABC Act came to effect in um, 2011. This is uh, following the new constitution. And I want to quote um, a clause that was um, in that law, the original law. It says that uh, within 14 days of the commencement of the IABC Act 2011, the president shall, in consultation with the prime minister, appoint a selection panel comprising various people that I'll be telling you shortly. Of course, you know who was the president at that time. It was Mwai Kibaki. Mm -hmm. Who was the prime minister? It was Raila Odinga. They were directly involved because in that panel, they contributed. The, pr the president that time um, nominated two persons. Uh, the prime minister, Raila Odinga, nominated two persons. The Judicial Service Commission nominated one person. The Kenya Anti-Corruption Advisory Board, one person. Association of Professional Societies of East Africa, one person. And that commission, I mean, that selection panel uh, gave us the nine commissioners led by Isaac Hassan as the chairperson. After that, of course, that clause was only applicable for the original or the initial uh, commission of IBC. Thereafter, there was an amendment in 2016, of course, after chaotic exchanges between the government and the opposition. You may recall that uh, Ray Lodinga had called for national dialogue in 2015. I think it was in the month of... Uh, May, when he came back, remember Baba Holiwawe? And he said, yeah. Ended up with the Joint Se uh, Select Committee, uh, led by James Orengo, Senator then, and Kereito Murungi, Senator then. It gave us a panel of nine members, including Parliamentary Service Commission to pick for the KCCB, that is the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, NCCK, Evangelical Association of Kenya, or is it Alliance? And then the Hindu Council of Kenya, each was uh, contributing one person. Then the Supkem Namlef and the CIPK were contributing together, jointly nominating wow. one person. That gave us the Chebukati Commission. Thereafter, because again, that law was only applicable for the first commission yeah. after the passage of that law. So treating a problem, but also creating and another, another one, one in, in, the in the near future. Yeah. So you find that in 2019, there was an amendment. Again, 11 member panel was proposed by the National Assembly. PSC, the Public Service, Parliamentary Service Commission, was to give four Public Service Commission, ESCC, the Law Society of Kenya, the National Gender and Equality Commission, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, each was to give one person. The Interreligious Council 
of Kenya was to give two, a total of 11 members. But there was a standoff because the Senate decided to amend that and reduce the number from 11 to 7, ending up with Law Society of Kenya, one person, Parliamentary Service Commission, four people, Inter-Religious Council of Kenya, two people, and uh, that gave a total of seven. Of course, it gave us the Cherera four. That commission, if you look at it, four out of seven was obviously a majority in the mm -hmm. panel. Mm -hmm. If you look at the previous panels, it was four out of 11. So uh -huh. they don't have a clear majority. Yeah. And this is the reason why we're where we are, because the High Court decided that you cannot have the Parliamentary Service Commission dominating a panel. Uh -huh. And so the, I mean, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, uh, the political leaders have been asking, if it was OK to pick Cherera four uh, through a panel that had yeah. four representatives from the Parliamentary Service Commission, directly or indirectly picked by, mm -hmm. you know who. Yeah. What is the problem now mm. that there's an amendment that uh, complies with the order of the High Court to an extent that now the panel provides that the Parliamentary Service Commission only contributes to people, um, political parties liaison committee gives one, and the Public Service Commission gives one. Nelson Makanda is leading that team. And what happens to his team now? Exactly. Good question. Because already there is a, a, <laughs> a case in court yeah. um, uh, about the recruitment of the new election commissioners with, with the bipartisan uh, issues notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Kiyom Tata has gone to court uh, in an urgent petition at the High Court arguing that the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission selection panel was appointed using an illegally passed law. Yeah, he claims that the law was irregularly passed by the Senate without considering views, opinions, and report of the Senate Standing Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs, and Human Rights. That that uh, that uh, has been uh, filed as uh, an urgent petition, so they want a, a ruling uh, as soon as possible. But by now, the IBC selection panel had already advertised. Uh, they had already said that... Um, How many people did they get? 900, 900 Kenyans plus, are yeah. eyeing the six commissioners' jobs. And then I think only 25 want to succeed to Fula Chibukati as, as IBC chairman of this election. Out of what... You know, but yeah. even as we go through the whole legal procedures that we have used, one thing has been very clear. Um, is that politics dominates and actually influences the changing of law to suit the political temperatures at the time or to suit the one who has the political upper hand. It would be numbers, what it would asking? be through <laughs> an alliance or whatever. So in as much as we can quote the law, one of the things that has always prevailed is that politics either influences changes in law towards um, you know, the constitution of our electoral management bodies or overrides that. So we have a law in place. We yeah. have a legally constituted selection panel that had already began its work. Even if we put aside Okio Mtata's uh, you know, petition in court, we don't know which way that will go. Legally, this is the position. This is Kenya. Electorals management bodies are political. Elections are political. That is why there's talk of a bipartisan or, you know, whatever will come out of this and we will see what, uh, you know, the contents and the subject of discussion will be. But it's very easy to see how a selection panel that had already began work could very easily be overridden by what is now a political process that has seven members from one political wing and seven members from another political wing to resolve an issue that is already legally constituted. And that just tells you where we are in this country and um, yeah. why we can talk law all day long. You can go back to politics. Yeah. And, there, yeah. and there are two sides to that yeah. because it can be overridden, mm -hmm. but it can also be used as a trump card. Remember, it's properly constituted yeah. mm -hmm. as per the law that exists yeah. currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can actually, uh, it, they can actually just proceed and be blind to what is going on. It doesn't concern you. There is a bipartisan process yeah. elsewhere. Okay. But you have an assignment mm. as per the existing law. That is why you will see some urgency when this team of seven from uh, Kenya Kwanzaa and team of seven from uh, uh, Azimio take to the uh, negotiating table. Because there is already a process that has not been stopped. In fact, we are all in, in this dilemma of how do you stop it? It is legally constituted. It is in motion. They have already advertised the positions. They are, there is a short list of 900 and uh, there is a short list of about um, 25 also for the, for, for okay. the chairman. So the, 
team can actually just go blind to what is going on and um, uh, complicate things. Yeah. Won't a law come in? An amendment to that? Because once they sit down, remember, the 14-member panel and, is yes. a panel of legislators. Their job the is to legislate, mm -hmm. make laws, change laws, <laughs> amend them, review them. Yeah. Um, so that could very easily, uh, you know, just sort of lend whatever processes and whatever work that they're doing. So I would be interested to know if, you know, the Nelson uh, Makanda team, you know, will continue with work, say, next week, even as, you know, the Kenya Kwanzaa side uh, presents at seven. We've seen the Azimio seven today. So are they likely to meet next week, review all of these? Because the court, by the way, in that Okia suit, declined to put an injunction to, stop, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, to, yeah, the to the work of the continue. selection panel. So will they be meeting at the very same time as, um, you know, these uh, 14 are meeting? Um, but, you know, and what happens to their work? But we've been in this country before where we created a law specifically to create a commission for a time. We gave mm -hmm. it a time clause. Right. Um, we hardly ever think about, okay, so let's make a law that is for posterity in terms of how we select members of our electoral management body because that's we don't always do been... We don't do posterity. Don't do posterity. In fact, uh, Mudomi Diankolu, um, a renowned lawyer in this country, agrees. He says, the issue is simple. We're simply incapable of long-term planning and strategy. Yeah. Which Kenyan leader can tell you with any serious degree of persuasion where we plan our country to be in 100 years? Are you aware of anything we made uh, one millennium ago to commemorate something for posterity? Yvonne, you know, Actually, in 19... politicians plan yeah. where they'll be in 100 years, not the country. Okay. Yep. But even if you Good look right at, 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 at our election, elect, electoral bodies, I remember in 1992, the, the ECK, the members, the commissioners were single-handedly uh, picked by the then president, Daniel yeah. Arap Moy. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now things changed in 1997 now when Moy allowed a political parties to nominate commissioners. And, you know, during that election where the chairman was Samuel Kibuitu, President Moy won, I think, with 36 percent mm -hmm. of the votes. That was back then. And we've come all this way from those appointments being done single-handedly to actually somehow using the constitutional to pick them, political influence notwithstanding. So we can't uh, make clothes for posterity. And no, no, Jamila, the echo of those habits yeah. is actually what is causing so all these problems. Yeah. Because even though now we have these processes that we want to select through uh, the law and through a consultative process that involves other stakeholders, you still find that um, uh, the president, for example, would still want to be the stakeholder across all the seven mm. uh, teams that are in the, in the sele selection team. So you want to control the, the process. So it's just another way of doing it the old way. How do you get to select all the seven? <laughs> be, so if, if, how, how you get to select all the seven is to influence the selection of all those who that will be selecting yeah. into the panel. Yeah, yeah. so it's the panel. it's so the same thing. Yeah, now done through a longer route. Okay, so it's the selection panel that selects the members of the electoral management body, and we are talking about the selection of the <laughs> selectors, <laughs> much in the same way that we are talking about what we want to talk about, how, when, and where we want to talk, and why we should be talking. Jamila, that Only means we've. We've, we've, we've talked enough. We need to close and do our final words. And kituku kwa kukukaribisha, because usually I'm the one who decides who will start. We start. <laughs>